Well, hello, everyone. Hi, Anmar. Hey, what's up? How are you? Good, good. Good to so, see you. Good to see you, too. So yeah. today, we're actually having youth on site. Hi, Megan. Hi, Lynn. We're having youth on site, but we're still doing Instagram because this is going to be shown in different groups right now um, after our recording. Hi, Melanie. Hi, everyone. <laughs> So we just had day camp one last Saturday, and despite the rain, we had a very good time. I hope you guys had a memorable time and it was meaningful for you. Hi, Kyla. Um, and we still have a few slots left for day two and three, so register and bring your payments before you lose a spot. And today we have Anmar Toma, as you can see. I don't know if you guys know him. He used to be part of Pursuit when he was still a teenager. Anmar, welcome to Pursue Youth. Can you tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, my name is Anmar. I'm 25 years old. Um, I used to go to uh, Pursue Youth um, when I was a teenager. Uh, and a big fan of Filipino food, so yeah. Oh, really? So what have you been up to lately? Uh, not much. Just busy with work and school. And, you know, just enjoying summer. So yeah, that's, that's Good pretty for much you. it. Yeah, Do you thanks. remember what you were doing this time last year? Uh, you know, just working full time and, you know, just enjoying summer. And I think I was like maybe getting ready for because I went to California last year. So I think I was getting ready to go to Cali. So. And now you can't travel, right? No, I <laughs> but it's all good. You're still enjoying. Yeah. So have you ever, um, Anmar, have you ever heard good news and bad to bad news at the same time? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, the one thing that I can remember right now on my head is, um, when I was in high school, um, I used to play for uh, my soccer team, soccer um, high school. And then, um, you know, my coach would come up to me in the mid in the mid season, and he and then he told me that, um, you know, he had a good news and bad news. And I told him, okay, what's um, the bad news? And he said, okay, well, you can't play um, soccer anymore because of your age, because I was like, I think I was a year older. Mm. And he said, and I, I said, okay, well, what's the good news? He said, the good news is you can play um, volleyball uh, for my, for the school. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, okay, you know, I'll do that for sure. But, um, you know, it was bad news for me because, you know, soccer is my favorite sport. So, but, um, yeah, that was the good and bad news. But at the same time, I love playing volleyball too, so it was great. And you had good memories playing volleyball for the school? Yeah, it was, it was great memories. You know, I made some good friends, um, you know, on that team. You know, some students that I didn't hang out with in school, but when I made that team, I made some good friends and then, you know, I made some good blogs and, you know, some good highlights. So, oh, yeah. You know, in the championship. So, but it's all good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, who do you usually share your good news with and your bad news with? So, I, you know, try my best to go to God and share my good and bad news to Him. You know, you know, if I have, you know, good news, I just come to Him and just, you know, give Him thanks and just like rejoice and just, you know, give Him glory for everything that He's done. And, you know, when I have, bad news I just also go to him and I just ask him for you know directions and, and you know peace and and guidance you know through the tough times and when I get the bad news um you know I try to do that my best it's not that easy but I try to do it but I also go to the people that I've been you know going to for the last eight eight years when I came to Canada you know I go to them and you know I just um I tell them everything you know mostly bad news because like you know um you know they have a lot of wisdom and you know they just always give me you know the right direction do so yeah well in the book of exodus god designed the tabernacle in a specific way that only allowed the high priest into the most holy place and that means that the high priest was the only one who had direct access to god and i'm going to read something from hebrews 9 which describes that setup it says that the first covenant between god and israel had regulations for worship and the place of worship here on earth there were two rooms in that tabernacle this tent-like structure where the israelites worship in the first room were a lampstand, a table, a sacred loaves of bread on the table. And this room was called the holy place. Then there was a curtain, and behind that curtain was a second room called the most holy place. Right. In that room were a gold incense altar and wooden chest called the Ark of the Covenant, which was covered with gold on all sides. Inside the Ark were a gold jar containing manna, Aaron's staff that sprouted leaves, and the stone tablets of the covenant. Above the ark were the cherubim of divine glory, whose wings stretched out over the ark's cover, the place of atonement. When these things were all in place, the priests regularly entered the first room, that's called the holy place, as they performed their religious duties. 
but only the high priest ever entered the most holy place and only once a year. Right. So he, it was only the high priest who could go to God. And right. he always offered blood. This is from an animal sacrifice for his own sins and for the sins of the people that they had committed in ignorance. And we find this in Hebrews 9. Now, today, our new covenant with God has Jesus as our high priest. Right. He paid the price of our sin by shedding his own blood, no animals, his own blood on the cross. And through Jesus, we can go to God because he paid for our sins and his righteousness is placed upon us. And he has forgiven us of our sins the moment that we ask him. So right. through Jesus, we can go to God directly about our troubles and joys, right? We don't have to be the go to the high priest or anything. Right. Um, and our big idea today is we can always go to God about anything. If we look at Matthew 11, 28 to 30, it says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Another passage in scripture says, Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find... Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. That's in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 to 8. So, Anmar, what do we learn from God about these passages? What do we see about his relationship with humans? Uh, you know, it just shows that, um, you know, God cares for us and, you know, he loves us. And, uh, you know, he wants us to come as we are and, you know, you know, he doesn't want us to always, um, you know, depend on ourselves, you know, when every time when we're like, you know, not feeling good or we're having, you know, uh, you know, trouble in our life or weaknesses, um, you know, he wants us to go to him, you know, and, um, you know, just like the Bible says, you know, it promises that, you know, God, God will take care of us. Mm -hmm. you know, no matter the situation it is, no matter how big the problem, you know, we know that, you know, everything with God is possible and, um, you know, he wants, uh, you know, to make kind of our life more simple and easier and, and better and he wants to bless us so yeah right yeah so we can go to god to find comfort to find encouragement we don't have to carry our problems alone and we need to persist in prayer when we feel that we think that he's not hearing our prayers when we think that there's no solution to our problems he wants us to just keep asking and keep knocking and right. trust that he hears us and he'll make a way where there seems to be no way have you ever heard of the story of esther in the bible I have, yeah, but I don't like know the story in detail, but I have heard of it. I think I read yeah. I think I read the book like two months ago, so it's pretty well, short though. Well Esther was a Jew who was selected to be the queen of King Xerxes of Persia, which was a world empire at the time. Right. And this wasn't a marriage out of her love for him or her choice. And King Xerxes was a very powerful king who could take anyone's life at any time. Right. And he chose her not knowing that she was a Jew. And her uncle Mordecai, who had adopted her, advised her to keep it a secret. Mordecai liked to hang out near the king's palace to keep an eye on his niece from a distance. One time, he incidentally heard some guards plotting to take the king's life. He was able to pass on the information, so the king's life was spared and the men were killed. Well, there was an evil man named Haman who was very close to the king, and he hated Mordecai because Mordecai was a Jew, and Mordecai never bowed down to him when he would walk by. So he feel like he didn't get the respect that he wanted as right. a big shot, right? right? So one day, Haman tells the king of a group of people in Persia that he felt needed to be eradicated, like mass murdered. He convinced the king to sign a decree to destroy these people. And he even offered to donate money for this to be carried out. And this was a time when the, the, the empire was struggling financially as well. The people he wanted to destroy were the Jews, and it was because of his hatred for Mordecai. It was around this time that, incidentally, the king also <clears throat> learns that Mordecai, whom he doesn't know is a Jew, had saved his life, and he wanted him to be honored by Haman himself. So things were starting to turn on Haman. Mordecai heard of the plot against Haman, and the Jew, uh, sorry, Mordecai heard of the plot against him and the Jews, by Haman, and he mourned, and he go went to his niece Esther to speak to the king on their behalf. Right. Well, Esther was like, I don't, I don't think I can do that, because you know he hasn't come to see me in a while, and if anyone goes to the king 
that he doesn't want to talk to and he doesn't extend his royal scepter to that person will be killed on the spot and so esther was afraid to go to her to the king even though he was her husband but mordecai challenged her and, and he told her esther don't think that your life will be spared if the jewish nation will be destroyed and doesn't even don't you even think that perhaps you have been placed in this position for such a time as this right and and so Esther thought about it and she was like, you know what, I'll step up to this challenge. And if I die, I die, right? As long as I, I take this risk and go to the king. And so she tells her people, she tells Mordecai, I need you all to fast with me for three days before I go in to speak to the king. So the Jewish nation, they all fast with Esther and her maidens for three days. And finally, she gets ready to face the king. And here's here's the big thing, right? Like, is he going to kill her or is he actually going to extend his royal scepter to listen to her? And guess what? First thing he does when he sees her is he extends his royal scepter and he accepts her. And because she wasn't fully confident yet, she doesn't tell him right away what she needs, which was the saving of her people. So she invites him to dinner and she invites Haman. And Haman's all excited. He's like, wow, I'm a big shot. I'm the only one invited to the king's dinner with the queen, right? And he didn't occur to him that he was heading towards his dem demise. So they have dinner together and the king's asking Esther, so what was it that you wanted to talk to me about? And she's like, um, I'll tell you tomorrow, let's have dinner tomorrow. So then she invites him again for dinner the following day. And then finally, Esther was like, there is a man who has plotted to destroy me and my people. And the king is so angered. He's like, who would do such a thing? And then suddenly she points to Haman and she's like, it's him. And the king is even more angered that he walks out to clear his head because he's just so angry. And the moment he does that, Haman knows that his life is on the line. So he falls on the couch where the queen is sitting and it just looks a little bit questionable. So when the king walks in, he's like, why do you even want to like do something with my wife? And so that there and there, the king orders the hanging of Haman on the very gallows he had prepared to take Mordecai's life with. And Mordecai then gets the royal position and the Jewish nation is given a means of deliverance. So this is an instance of someone receiving very, very bad news, right? The destruction of her and her people. Esther had to be reminded by Mordecai that there was a way out, and that was if she used her royal position as the queen of Persia and appealed to her husband, the king. Jensen Franklin said that we often forget who we are as royalty. We need to remember that we are children of the king. We have special privileges. It's okay to go to God with our deep, deep troubles, like Esther did to her husband, the king of Persia, a world power at the time. And here's an example of a psalmist crying to God about his troubles. It's a psalm of Laman, which is like a complaint or a mourning of something painful or difficult. Wake up, O oh Lord. Why do you sleep? Get up. Don't reject us forever. Why do you look the other way? Why do you ignore our suffering and oppression? We collapse in the dust, lying face down in the dirt. Rise up. Help us. Ransom us because of your unfailing love. This is from Psalm 44, 23 to 26. This okay. passage seems pretty harsh. Anwar, have you ever felt like you wanted to shout out to God in this way? I have, but you know, not 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 such a, as an extreme as that way. But um, I have like kind of got you know mad at God, and I was like kind of, you know, I was shouting at God because one time um actually, I uh, you know I was doing my English twelve, but um, I did not pass. So I really got mad at God. I'm like you know I was like kind of you know crying for you know crying to the Lord it's like God, why did this happen to me? And, um, you know, but, uh, you know, even though I tried my best to pass that course, but I did not, but, um, you know, just, um, at the end of the day, it's like, I knew God was a good God. You know, sometimes I feel like, uh, you know, we just, um, you know, we go through trouble and then we kind of like, I don't know how to say it, but like, for me, it's like, I did kind of get mad at God, but like, you know, after a while, you know, I just started reminding myself, you know what, God is a good God. You know, just like in Romans 8, 28, that it says that, you know, God makes all things work for the good for those who love God. And um, also like in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you declares plans to prosper and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. So, you know, our God is a good God. So I did get mad at God, yes, and I was shouting to the Lord, like, why did this happen? 
but um, that doesn't mean that God is not a good God. You know, He loves me and, and He cares for me, and you know, He has His reason. And sometimes I feel like maybe, you know, God let that happen. You know, it might be for a maturity. Maybe God is telling me that, okay, hey, you don't, you can't just go after your feelings. You can't just go after, you know, your life. You know, life is going good. Just you feel good. If the life is going bad, you feel bad. So, you know, God showed me that. You know what? I should stay grounded in the Lord. You know, I should not be shaken. And, um, you know, I, I, I learned from that. You know, that, you know what? My peace and joy is in God's presence and, um, you know, worldly things. So, yeah. So what that shows is that you actually have a relationship with God and you can go to him about anything. Even when you're angry, whether you're happy. I have some a couple of youth here <laughs> looking through the window. There's Emma and uh, Bea. Hello, girls. <laughs> I thought you were going to show your faces here. Come on. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so the good and the bad, we go to God about it. And what, what, what's really good about that is you were able to release your emotions to God. And that's what I love about the book of Psalms is that you will see the different emotions that the psalmist went through and how they were honest to God, whether they were they were um, dealing with their sin, where the, whether they were dealing with pain in their life, with their enemies, whether they were rejoicing, whether they were worshiping. So I just want to encourage you guys, if you have not read the book of Psalms, it's a really, really good book to go through, especially if you're struggling. Anmar, how, how should knowing you can go to God with anything affect your daily life? Uh, I can't hear you. Yeah, can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. No, it's just that when I gave my life to Jesus, you know, I have found that, you know, I have found joy and, you know, the ultimate joy and peace, you know, in God's presence. So for me, it's like when I have bad days, I always just go to him and I, you know, God, you know, he changes my day. It just he makes everything works out. You know, I just, you know, I have joy and peace when I'm in his presence. So I feel like, yeah, that's how. So knowing this, it, it gives you a sense of peace and joy, um, knowing that when you when you don't know if you can trust people with your troubles, when you don't know if you can trust people for advice, that right. there's a God who cares about you and he wants right. you to give you his burdens because he wants a relationship with you and he wants a relationship with all of us. So going to God with our problems and joys is not just about going to him or finding solutions, but it's about a relationship with him. He wants us to share with him of the happy moments, the sad moments, the struggles, the difficulties, the anger, anything that we're going through. So any words of right. advice you want to leave with our youth? Uh, I'm on live. Sorry, someone became in the room. <laughs> <laughs> was wrong. Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, just uh, fix your eyes on Jesus. You know, don't let, um, you know, anything distract you or, or, or make you, you know, far from the presence of the Lord, you know, make sure that, you know, you're just spending time with the Lord every day because you know, personally, you know, like I feel like the best thing I've ever experienced in my life, it's, um, you know, just being in the presence of the Lord and just having a relationship with God and, you know, just seeing God's will done in my life. And um, so my advice to the youth is, you know, just um, be focused on God. Um, you know, don't let anything distract you. And, you know, once you keep God first, everything will fall through. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. I want to leave you with these two questions to think on. What do you need to take to God today? What is it that you're going through that you need to bring to him and lay at his feet? It could be a struggle. It could be a joy that you want to just entrust to him. Because, you know, sometimes we have amazing things in our life and then just trouble just suddenly shows up. And how should knowing you can go to God with anything affect your daily life? Like, how does it affect um the way you plan out your day or do you have a specific time where you talk to god that you listen to him that you read his word that you that you pray that you worship right so um why don't we pray right now uh, i'll ask anwar actually to pray for us is that okay anwar sure for okay, sure let's anwar. pray i can okay. dear heavenly father we just want to thank you lord uh we want to thank you just for everything um we talked about today uh you know i just pray for everyone who heard the word today i ask you that um just um touch them lord and i just pray that um you know you will bless them and be lord and i pray that for everything that we have talked today and everything that we have learned you know we just ask you that um you would help us to live it lord we want to really live it and we, will, we want to really come to you with our 
good and bad news, Lord, and we want to submit to you everything, and, and we believe that you will make, you will make our life, our, our path straight, Lord Jesus. And uh, we just want to thank you for who you are, and we want to uh, thank you, Jesus, for, you know, just forgiving us and, 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 and um, making us to be your people, Lord. And, and, and um, yeah, Lord, we just want to thank you, and um, amen. Amen. And God, we just speak your blessing over Anmar and his future. Please continue to direct his path and bless his ways and use him to be a light and example to other people and just give him strength in whatever struggles he's going through. And we also pray for the world right now. We pray for healing, physical healing from the, this disease is, that's affecting nations around the world, financial distress that's affecting so many people. We ask for your miraculous power to come through. We ask for those dealing with depression and mental illness and even just emotional, um, uh, being unsettled emotionally because of everything that's going on. God, you are our healer. So we just look to you today for healing, for hope, for direction for our lives, for provision for our lives. And we just want to bless Pursuit Youth as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, it was really nice having you with us today on Mar. God bless yeah. you and lead you. And thank you, everyone, yes, for tuning having... in. We're having on-site discussions today. It's really exciting. Uh, we've had a lot of youth come through our building, but we are maintaining our physical distance and sanitation measures. So, yeah, God bless you. Bye. Have a good God week. God bless you. Bye. Bye, Rashid. <laughs>